Britain's decision to leave the European Union plunged governments worldwide into a whirlwind of economic and political uncertainty. The ripples of the referendum will have an unmistakable impact on global economies and by association on global real estate markets. What kind of impact it will have here at home? Let's talk to our real estate expert, Jay Banerjee. Welcome to the show, Jay. Good to be here, Molly. All right. So our, what kind of impact Brexit will have on our real estate here at home? Well, you know, it could be a way to attract foreign investors and not just to the hot markets of Toronto and Vancouver, but to be able to attract them in a balanced way all across Canada. All right. So what you're telling me is that it's going to have an, a positive impact. A very positive and on all markets. Mm -hmm. On all markets. All right. So let's talk uh, p uh, particularly about real estate. Absolutely. Well, you know, the immediate impact of the post-Brexit vote on Canada's economy will be pressure to keep our interest rates low. Okay. Well, they're pretty low right now after this is going to have to be free. Well... It, <laughs> the key is to keep it that way. Okay. You see, this is because, you see, many segments, remember, Canada has been exporting about $16 billion worth of goods to the UK. Now, it's not going to change overnight, but there, there could be some impact in that area. All right. So, uh, what else? The other thing would be that, you see, you know, what it's going to do is that it's going to actually push investors to our shores. That, uh, that is always a good thing. Because the impact that Brexit is going to have on real estate in the UK is that the value is going to cool the market down in real estate in the UK, including London, mm -hmm. eventually. And people that have their money uh, parked in real estate will want to shift it to other places. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Canada should be the very first place or one of the key places that they're going to come given our stable market. All right. And a close association. <coughs> yes. Uh, as, our, exactly. Yes. Our as our members of Commonwealth exactly. countries. Yeah? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Very good. So uh, this is a good opportunity for foreign investors, particularly those from the United Kingdom. That's right. To come and invest here. That's right. In Canada. And may I share with you why I said it's going to be a balanced approach? Mm -hmm. Because you see, in the UK, they've been used to a 28 huge taxes on their on their properties, mm -hmm. right? These investors have are, are different than what we normally see and are used to. They don't care about the interest rate, the return. Um, anything. All mm -hmm. they're looking for is to park their money mm -hmm. into a home, a real estate investment in Canada, mm -hmm. and that money is safe. It's free from economic, uh, you know, inflation and all of these things. Mm -hmm. That's their only interest. They put in a million dollars. They don't care whether it's going to be in Newfoundland, Calgary, some small town, you know, in Canada, you know, in Alberta. Uh, up, up north. Hopefully Ontario. Hopefully Ontario. <laughs> well, people people will always, always put money into Toronto and Vancouver. We mm -hmm. know that. But we do want to see as a Canadian, as a proud Canadian, we want to see our country grow all over. That's right. Okay, so when investors are, are investing yes. in our economy by association, mm -hmm. it will uh, create um, jobs. It will create jobs because of the extra money coming in. Mm -hmm. Employment, Employment, right? Employment. So that is always good for mm -hmm. people who then will be able to buy real estate here. Exactly. Because exactly. the interest rates are going to be low. For Stay low. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. or maybe lower, hopefully. That's right. Okay. That's right. What else? Well, other than that, you know, what is, what's going to happen is that you're going to have more people coming in mm -hmm. from down south, from the, from the USA. 
because why so? Well, instead of instead of the Brits. Okay. Because the the dollar has weakened, the pound weakened by about ten percent, making the U.S. dollar right now stronger, and giving them buying power mm -hmm. because the Brits having lost some of their dollar, their their the pound their capacity pounds, yeah. does not mean that. It means they're going to come less to Canada, but that doesn't mean that our rental income from the visitors is going to go down. All that's going to happen is it's going to get replaced by our friends and our, our close, close, neighbors. I would say real neighbors down south. Okay, so a lot more Americans, and they like to spend? They like to spend. Right? Yes. And so weaker dollar. Yes. Can a weaker Canadian dollar. Yes. In contrast with in contrast the American with the, dollar. With the American dollar. That's is right. always a good thing. Yes. And so that means more money pumped into our economy. More money pumped into our economy. More so jobs. More jobs. And more ability to buy homes. That's correct. Okay. Anything else? Well, uh, what I what I would say along with that is that last but not least, our government needs to be proactive. Okay. What does our government need to do? Well. <laughs> First, let me say why. Because we don't want to scare the money out of Canada. Mm -hmm. The feds need to figure out what they want, but where they want foreign investment, and then build those incentives. Yes, because you see, one of the concerns that Canadians have mm -hmm. is that they're having to compete yeah. with foreign investors. Yes. OK, so what I'm hearing you say is that our government, federal government, needs to have that right balance so that opportunities are not taken away from local people. <clears throat> and yet not scare them. Because you see, while not against restrictions, mm -hmm. we have to have some, but such as imposing a foreign bias tax. However, it cannot be too high where it scares away a foreign investor. Because internationally, there, there are quite high taxes worldwide. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a bit of both. In, and I would say a caution to the government of Canada is imposing those taxes. See where they're going to put their money and mm -hmm. in what kind of properties and pro actually provide on the on the opposite scale, provide incentives, incentives to yeah. foreign investors Maybe something special for the Brits coming in because of what they've gone through, a little maybe a tax holiday, and it's not, not to overbalance the scale, but they've gone through a lot. And so we welcome them. But you know what, Molly? All this means is good news for our local Canadian Toronto homeowners. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about that because yes. that is what resonates with the people, right? Yes. Because all they're interested in is, yes, we want mm -hmm. to help them. Yes, we want to support all good. Our, uh, our friends mm -hmm. in Britain. Mm -hmm. But how does that impact us? What's in it for us? OK. Well, you see, people have been talking for a long time. I mean, just, just in the month of June, uh, every year we do a comparison to the year before. Mm -hmm. And we say in June 2015, what were the prices and in June 2016 by what percentage or what amount well what is the average price and how much did they go up mm -hmm. and the numbers just came out mm -hmm. the the price or the the increase of price across the GTA or let's just say Toronto from June 2015 went up are you ready for this 17 percent that's huge that's huge yeah, so all of you who don't own a home and you've been waiting for the market to slow down or maybe come down, yes. it's not going to happen. And if you had in invested in real estate even a year ago, mm -hmm. you would have been up 17%. That's right. And there is no instrument that the banks offer where you can make even 10%. Even if you have nothing to do with the Brits coming in, what it means as an investor buying in Toronto, you should call me because I can help you to invest even now at any price range anywhere in the GTA. Because what it means, Molly, is that if the investor is buying, obviously when prices increase, unfortunately some of our other Canadian homeowners, not, and naturally and rightfully, can't always afford the next level. For, you know, and that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. And then the fear is, if there's not enough uh, 
activity of sales, what's going to happen? Well, what this means is there's going to be another infusion of money, infusion of buyers into our real estate world, our real estate economy, our GTA real estate, all good news. They should call me because you know what? You could earn money on your home or your investment and it's so, so stable. And Jay, talk to the first time buyers. Yes. Because right now the people who are most scared mm -hmm. um, are the first time buyers. Yes. Right? Because they really uh, don't know. They're scared. They don't know what's going to happen. Will they be able to um, afford it? So let, why don't you tell someone who is renting mm -hmm. and who wants to continue to rent? Yes. Right? What they need to do to change that status because everybody wants to own a home. Yes. I so mean, how uh -huh. can we help people buy their first home? Absolutely. To somebody who is renting, I was talking to a friend last weekend and he said he had been renting uh, for five years. And what we, we discovered together is that in those five years, the landlord, it was a house in Mississauga, the value of his real estate went up about $200,000. Wow. While he paid the rent. But I said to my friend, and he may be watching today, as a matter of fact, is that take, you know, don't, don't let that get you down because there's a solution. And what the solution is, even today, you can buy a home at five, six hundred thousand. Even in this, this so you know, so-called boom, the way, I believe it's an economic steady increase, and you can still find ways to you know. You may have to do some have an in-law suite if it is certified. You can rent it. You can do those things. There are people. There's a, there could be. It might be a bachelor. Says I don't need a house. You know what? You could choose this gentleman has said he might even have a room rented. And he said, and, and what we found out is this, for the same person, if he was to buy a little, a small freehold townhouse, 400,000, you can get one, 450, you can get one, right? And then ultimately, he, whether he rents part of it out, in the next five years, he will walk away with a hundred and, a hundred, to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars increase of equity, money paid down, values going up, combined in the next five years. And no tax. No tax. Yeah, so that's a big one. So whether you're a first time buyer mm -hmm. or you are an investor, mm -hmm. this is a great time for yes. you to invest into real estate. So Jay, if there's somebody who's watching and they want to contact you, yes. and people always call you they every do. week, uh, why don't you give them your number? Certainly, 647-273-1119. Go ahead and call Jay now. He will help you not only to buy your first home, but if you want to upgrade to a bigger home or downgrade to a smaller home, or perhaps you are an investor, call Jay today and he will help you. Thank you for being here, Jay. Good to be here, Molly.